Hi, my name is Roman Harkovsky. In this demo, I will show you installation of IBM Integration Broker Developer Edition, which you can download for free from IBM website. The officially supported platform is Red Hat Linux and a few other operating systems, but in this demo, I'll show you how it works on CentOS, because CentOS is really just a replica of Red Hat. What I have here is a clean system, and I have installed uh, some extensions, namely suited to bit extension support, which you may or may not have on your default installation. So let me briefly show you the script. I will be doing these things by hand, but uh, I created the script so you can automate the complete installation process and you don't have to do it by hand. Um, so here is my script. So you could see I could run the prerequisites updates for the Linux, which you may or may not have installed already, then the next step in the script will be just unzipping the downloaded file, and the downloaded file you can get from the IBM website. Um, so if you go and Google for IBM Integration Bus Download, and you click on the first Google link, and it opens up the IBM website and this is where you can download the integration bus version 9. The download is free and as a developer you can install it and use the IBM integration bus for unlimited time without restrictions as a developer. You only pay for supported runtime in deployment uh, but the developer installation is free of charge. So that's where I downloaded this file. And I already unzipped it just to save the time because the file is uh, roughly about 4.5 gigabyte. So I did the unzip. And then you just run the installer. So that's really the first step of it, the installation. So what, what I do, I'll go into my... I'll, I'll just open another command line. And I'll go to my download directory. And I have the unzipped version and I'll go into sample scripts. In my sample scripts I have the script that will install everything, all prerequisites uh, including MQ and IBM Integration Broker runtime and the Integration Broker Toolkit which is a development environment. You don't need to install it on production machines. Now as you can see I can just use this command and I run it as a root user and I give it in accept all licenses so that it will do the install. So let's do just that. Let's run the installer and this is going to take the whole thing end-to-end -end, un installing MQ, integration broker runtime, everything all together will roughly take about 10 minutes. So compress the video so we don't have to sit here and watch for 10 minutes how it installs. Okay, um, so the installation is now finished. What I need to do now is add the current user to the groups MQM and MQ Brokers. So let me add these users. Now to make this effective, I need to log off and log in again. Okay, now that we have the group membership done, you could see both MQM and MQ Brokers. What we can do, we can start the MQ Explorer and create a default broker configuration. So that default broker configuration can be used for testing and development of the flows. This is MQ Explorer in version 9. This is based on Eclipse. When I click on my integration nodes, you could see the button create the default configuration for IBM integration bus. So I click the button, press next, press next. It's going to go ahead and create the default configuration for my broker. We'll give it a few seconds. Now it's starting the broker.
Okay, uh, so the broker is up and running. It's ready. Uh, we don't need the MQ Explorer anymore, so we can close that. Okay, now that the default broker configuration is ready, I can start the default broker toolkit. In some cases, I found it useful to run the chmod command so that I can use it as a current user. And for the workspace, I'll use my home directory for the workspace. Click OK. The integration toolkit is being started. Maximize the window. And what you see here is the default integration server that's already created in the previous step. So let's just see how it works. Create a new application. Let me call it Echo application. In this echo application, let me just create a basic message flow. I'll call it echo. In this message flow, I'll do just simple hello world or reply flow without any fancy stuff. So I'll just do HTTP reply, HTTP input, and I'll use the trace node in between just so that I can do increment the counter. I'll say increment counter and I'll also do the trace node. All right. And in my trace node, I'll just write it into the file temp echo dot log. Now I can connect my nodes. This is very basic flow, obviously. Now, to implement the counter in this, I'll just show you how I use ESQL. Uh, so first of all, I want this counter to be used across multiple uh, flow instances. So I'll just use the declare variable message counter, and that will be shared, and of the type integer and initial value will be zero. Now I'll just copy headers and copy the entire message. Now I want to protect the counter from multiple concurrent executions. So I'll declare begin atomic and let me do set my message counter plus one. This will be end. And now the shared variable between all of the message flows is set. Now let me set the local environment variable. So environment dot variables. will be equal message counter. Okay. Uh, now, this is a local environment variable specific to my flow instance. So what I can do now, I can use it in my trace node uh, for the pattern. So I'll say trace counter equals and we'll do output of my message counter. So I'll save it. Uh, one thing I forgot, I didn't specify the URL, so that will be echo URL. So I save it, um, and we're done. So we can test the flow. So I right-click on my flow. I say, test my message flow, deployed into the server. Let me minimize this. Uh, and in, we'll just do whatever data. It doesn't matter. We'll send the message. We'll deploy on the server and this is being deployed tested and okay so let's rerun it ran too fast
okay uh, so that was too fast so it takes about four seconds uh, to deploy uh, and I clicked on that too fast uh, so you could see this flow is now running now I can rerun or I can create a new uh, new request and I can also change the trace variable to output something else so for instance I can add the message body to the trace variable I'll say body equals and I'll say body <clears throat> and I can also change my HTML HTTP input um, for for instance the message will be XML and namespace uh, so that I can use XML with parsing and when I save it I can rerun the message flow so I'll say I don't need to save changes to my previous test and let me maximize it and I'll say here edit as text so I'll just do XML input we'll say send the message deploy to the flow this is gonna take a few seconds to deploy and this is what I got back so you can see I changed the flow and in a handful of seconds it's back now let me see what is the trace output in my flow so you can see first one two and three so we invoked it three times the message counter then we redeployed the flow which made the counter zero and now it is printing the value of the variables uh, so I can go and I can invoke it again and I can say edit as text and I can do because this is not tied to any specific schema it's just any XML well-formed XML this will be in my trace and if I do this again so you can see this is a value that I got and the message counter too um, and I can go back and forth I can go and change the flow and retest it again so uh, for instance uh, for this one let's go into the trace and let's remove the message body save it and rerun it again so that we can test the message flow once again edit as text now we removed it from tracing so it doesn't matter what we pass as a parameter all we care about is that we will see the message counter so I can rerun two three four five and there we go the message body disappeared and the counter is up to five